conflict on this video because... I mean, there might be many reasons. But you probably clicked on this video because you are a student in Denmark to become, to be, already are... Anyways, you are a student in Denmark that is stressed AF. Are you questioning yourself? Where do I apply? What kind of documents do I send? Where do I go? What do I do first? Don't worry, slow down. So I'm gonna do the biggest favor of all time and I'm gonna do this video where I'm gonna tell you everything from the beginning to an end, step by step with every single detail. What kind of documentation you will need? Where do you go? How long will it take you to receive answers? And blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so let's get right into the video right now. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> So I'm gonna try my best to be as quick as possible because we don't have any freaking time to waste. So first things first. So you come to Denmark, right? What the first thing you have to do is get the residence permit. You need a residence permit in order to get the CPR. CPR, we'll get into that later, but first things first, what you have to do is get the residence permit. So you can either register online for an appointment which I will link everything in the description box or you go on the same day as all the students do when I was there, I went on this day that was specifically organized for all the students like there was a big line but everything was done in like one day so I suggest you, you go on this day when they announce for like all the students to come so you go there what kind of documents you will need to have? any kind of valid ID, passport I think you need a passport, like exactly passport. You can try with driving license, but just to make sure you take both. Any accurate size passport photo. I think I needed to have a proof of my residence where I lived. So like a contract between the person that you're renting out the place from and a complete application form from OD1. So it's basically this huge form that you have to fill, which I did on the same day when I went there, or else you can also fill it out online. So. You have all of this, you go there, you know, you give all the information they need and then you wait for the approvement. But when you go on the same day as all the students go, you can get the approval on the same day. But if you already booked an appointment, then you have you will have to wait for the approval into, until you get it in your mailbox. So when you get the approval for the residence permit, you can apply for your CPR. Woohoo! CPR is really important. You probably heard a million times what is CPR. If not, then I will put it here. What is CPR? For in order to fill the CPR uh, online application, what you will need is the residence permit approval and the address where you live. So you will need to have like a contract between uh, the person that is renting out the place for you in order for them to prove that you have the place to live. After you fill out this form, you wait for the answer into your email box, I think, or even like mailbox, but you will get an answer from them like saying that, okay, now you can come to the international house. I think international house. You come there, you have a visit, you fill out something else, and then you wait for the actual physical card, the yellow card. The yellow card is really important because if you will not have the yellow card, you will not be able to apply for a bank account, you will not be able to get a job, you will not have you will not be able to get free health insurance. Like yellow card is something you literally depend on if you live in Denmark. So you wait for your card to arrive into your mailbox. I waited for about maybe one week, two weeks. After you get your CPR yellow card, congratulations. Now you have to apply for an MID. What is NAMID? I will not even try to explain what is NAMID, but it's basically, I will put it here. NAMID is basically like a login to anything that is private. So how do you do? You request the NAMID online for the appointment, right? And then when you get an answer, then you come to the nearest citizen service center. So you go there, you fill out all the information they ask you again like i think always have passport passport and cpr like always have these kind of documents and then you just wait for your name id to arrive into your mailbox so you get your name id you get all the logins congratulations again you went through the hardest part i mean i guess all of these parts are kind of hard but so after that you will probably want to open a bank account in denmark 
probably. If you're gonna apply for a job, you better have a Danish bank account. So usually people go to Danske Bank, um, like all of my students, classmates apply for Danske Bank because it's the easiest, I think, and everyone basically uses it. Call the bank and ask them what you need to do. I want to open my bank account. You either go to the place and you fill out all the information or you just call them and make an appointment, I guess. If it applies to anything, like if you have any questions, don't be scared, just call them, spam them, like you need to make sure, like it's better to, to be safe than sorry, believe me, I, I learned this lesson. I'm assuming you're gonna look for a job, right? After you get your bank account, get the tax card, and no one told me this before, I was like, what the hell is tax card? But you need to have a tax card when you will get a job and you will get the money transferred into your account tax card really easy order online it's gonna like it's not like a physical card is gonna come in like it's gonna be registered in your system that you will have it so the most requested part i got so many questions about the scholarship as sue so this one i'm gonna try my best to not miss anything and not to mislead you on anything but you want to get the scholarship right you know probably that you have to get 43 hours per but how do you apply it when do you apply it you usually apply it when you find a job and you work out three months in advance because that is like an insurance for you that okay i made i worked those hours those 43 hours and above um for three months in, ad in advance which means that i'm safe i will not have to give any money money back what i did i remember i found a job and i applied for a suit like right away just like praying that i will get those hours but if you're not sure just don't do it like work those hours work those three months in advance and then see if you have those hours because if you will not get 43 hours like literally if you will have 42 hours on your payment slip you will have to give all of your scholarship back, which it's not fun, believe me. So what do you do, like how you apply is basically you do it online. It's not hard at all. You just fill out the form and I think you can do everything online. And then you either go to your university and tell them that you want to apply for a suit and you fill out the documents at the like desk, the administration, and then they will send it out to the uh, suit department or else you can also do everything online. But basically what I did is I filled out everything online. And then I went to the desk, like the administration place at my university, filled out papers there, sent everything. And I think it took me like also two weeks to get the money into my bank account. And another thing for a sue, yes, you can have less than 43 hours, but you can also not have more than, I think it's around like 110 hours. There's like this specific sum of money that you cannot exceed because then you will also have to give it back. But the ASU thing is really like confusing because I've heard many cases. Maybe one month you will work 42 hours, but then the other month you will have 50, 60 hours. They take the average, you're fine. That's what I have heard. This is what I've asked on the phone. So yeah, so that is for the SU part. It's a lot of information to take in, but I'm gonna try my best to write down everything in the description box because it's really important. Yeah, so that basically it. I really hope so. But there's one game that my classmates created. It's about like the whole application when you come to Denmark. It's actually really fun and really useful. I will also link it down below. But if you have any other questions, be free to ask me because I've had like a couple people email me and write me and ask me questions, like everything from even accommodation. So like, honestly, be free to ask me anything. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. But yeah, I really hope I helped you out because this is the video I truly wished would have existed when I came because oh lord jesus i uh, hope i helped you in some sort of way and i'll see you next week love you